Smoking weed was making my anxiety a thousand times worse. In today's brief video, I'm going to talk about the four stages of anxiety that come with smoking weed and quitting. I'm going to talk about why the anxiety happens, and then I'm going to give you six bonus tips at the end of the video to help you manage anxiety. For those of you just meeting me, my name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching Programs, where we help people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content. Subscribe to the channel if you find value in today's video. So stage number one of four when it comes to smoking weed that I initially experienced was weed actually helped with my anxiety. Now I started smoking when I was 23, 22 years old. I was in college, there was lots of family drama going on at that point in my life, and I found that smoking weed on the weekends seemed to really relax me, it allowed me to detach for a little bit, and quite frankly, I think it helped me to organize my thoughts a little bit better. Now, as my journey and my relationship with weed progressed, I started to smoke on a nightly basis, and it became something that I needed to do in order to fall asleep at night, in order to shut my mind off. And then I was smoking on a daily basis. It was only during the evenings, but it was every single night. And this is really where I started to enter into the stages of cannabis addiction. Now, during this time, my anxiety actually got significantly worse, especially with the introduction of THC cartridges dabs, and other high concentration THC products. I noticed that I started to develop really bad social anxiety, something that I had never had before. And then towards the end of my cannabis journey, I was actually getting panic attacks. I couldn't breathe at night. I would feel a lump in my throat. I would feel a lump in my chest and I actually couldn't breathe. It was a horrible experience and I was diagnosed with panic attacks. Now the sad thing was, is I would smoke more weed and consume more weed because I was under the impression that it was helping that anxiety, that it was making it better. Now I wanna explain why during this phase of anxiety induced by weed, things were getting worse. So there's a few reasons for this. Reason number one is weed impacts your endocannabinoid system. This system regulates mood, it regulates your emotional responses to situations. And weed is biphasic, so at just the right amount it might benefit a person and relieve anxiety, but when that individual has too much, it becomes biphasic and it might make that anxiety significantly worse. It might lead to paranoia, it might lead to psychosis, it might make things much worse. And I was on the negative side of that, that effect of THC. Reason number two, it was making my anxiety worse. As I mentioned briefly, at this point I developed a cannabis addiction. So I would actually get anxious wondering, when can I get home to smoke? When is this conversation with this family member gonna end so I can get home to smoke? When can I get my next hit? When can I just chill out and relax with weed? I was getting cravings, and until I fed those cravings, my anxiety was actually going up. I was going through a withdrawal symptom of cannabis addiction, which would be cravings, psychological cravings for a substance. Now, the other reason that weed was making my anxiety worse was because of the situation it had put me in. Financially, I was spending a lot of money on weed, so my finances were not looking so good. And more importantly, I was no longer focused on my goals, my hobbies, my relationships, or the things that I wanted to achieve. Here I was laying in my room getting high every night, knowing deep down that I was capable of so much more, but I wasn't going out and pursuing that. I was becoming very quickly comfortable in one of the most uncomfortable places there was to be, and that was being stoned alone in my room at night day in and day out, failing to achieve the things I want to while driving my finances down the hole. Now another reason why weed was also making my anxiety worse was its impact on my health. And this especially had to do with when I was smoking black market THC cartridges. Now 
I started to develop symptoms of cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. So I wasn't totally vomiting, but I had lost about 15 pounds. I looked terribly thin in a very unhealthy manner and my health was rapidly declining. You could see that steel gray color in my skin. And not only physically was my health declining, mentally the depression was getting out of control. I always had a little hint of depression. It was something I've always managed, but now it was getting extreme. And on top of that, I was starting to develop symptoms of depersonalization and psychosis. And as I said, a lot of that did start happening when I started using THC cartridges and stronger concentrations of THC products. Now that was bad because I was starting to become more and more anxious about my declining health, about my declining finances, about my lack of motivation to go pursue my dreams and my goals. That was making me anxious. And in turn, that anxiety was resulting in depression because every time I try and quit, every time I try and stop, I couldn't. And that feeling of defeat, that feeling of guilt, that feeling of shame, that feeling of regret was making me deeply depressed. The saddest part about this all was is I was stuck in that cycle of addiction. Stage number three of anxiety from weed deals with with the withdrawals. So maybe you get to that point where you finally decide to quit, and that's the purpose of this channel. It helps you with that. You're going to probably experience a little bit more anxiety and depression initially when you first quit. And that's because of that initial decrease in dopamine and serotonin. And that's also because a lot of people who quit are under the mindset that they're giving something up, that they're depriving themselves of something. And I like to remind you, you're not depriving yourself of anything, I promise. It's about what you're gaining back in life. Remember, the weed isn't fixing the anxiety in this scenario, it's making it worse. So you're trying to get rid of that, which is a positive thing, not a negative thing. But there is gonna be that initial period of withdrawals and I promise I have six tips to help with that. And then stage number four is your recovery. So this is where you're beyond two weeks sober, beyond three weeks sober, entering that three month mark of sobriety. And assuming you've been putting in a lot of effort to your sobriety and recovery, this is where I think you're gonna see that anxiety and that depression significantly start to decrease. Most of our clients will tell us within the first week to two of stopping smoking weed that that anxiety goes away. Now initially, again, I want you to keep in mind during those initial withdrawal stages that anxiety is probably gonna be worse and I'm gonna explain why that is. So. If you're quitting and you need some extra tips on it, this is what I would recommend doing. Tip number one, stay busy, okay? This is the best way for me to deal with my anxiety. I use a planner called the High Performance Planner and I plan out every half hour interval of my day. I also write out my goals and the things that I want to accomplish that day because it gives me something to focus on. When my brain is busy and when my brain is focused, I don't have time to get anxious. I don't have time to deal with the anxiety because I'm busy jumping into the things that I actually want to be doing. So organizing and focusing, I think is a great way to manage anxiety. Remember, when you were smoking weed, chances are you were sitting around not doing much, watching Netflix, scrolling social media on your phone, just leading to more anxiety. And that's not good. You were bored. You were stationary. So get up, move, and fill your day jam-packed with activity, and I think that's going to help you out. Because we know that boredom, being high, wasn't helping the anxiety. So we wanna do the opposite. Tip number two, exercise moderately. Exercise is a great thing that you can do that's gonna help to replenish some of that dopamine and some of that serotonin that you're lacking when you initially quit a substance, whether that's weed, alcohol, nicotine, whatever it may be. Moderate exercise in a healthy manner. Maybe this is as simple as going for a walk, doing 20 to 30 minutes of yoga each day, or going to a gym. It doesn't have to be anything rigorous. Just enough to get your blood flowing and get those feel-good hormones released. Exercise has also been proven to release natural endocannabinoids, natural cannabinoids that your body makes, and that's why it can help have that calming effect. Talk therapy 
was another thing that I utilized. That's tip number three to manage anxiety. I worked with a counselor. I worked with a business coach. I worked with a life coach. Remember, if you don't have anyone to talk to, a friend, a family member, you can always call our offices here at Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching and look into the programs that we offer. But talk therapy is extremely powerful. It's amazing what just talking about your situations can do when it comes to anxiety. It helps you to realize something that may be causing you a mass amount of anxiety might not actually be that big of a situation. And when you break it down into bite-sized pieces, it's a lot easier to get through it. Tip number four of six, focus on your sleep. Now initially when you're going through those withdrawals, you're gonna have insomnia, you're gonna struggle with that. And yes, there's some things that can help like melatonin or ZMA supplements, which I've linked in the description below, but really you just have to get through that insomnia. But understand, when you're sleep deprived, you're going to have more anxiety, you're going to be more anxious. And the best thing you can do for yourself is just recognize that in those first few days of quitting. Oh, I'm more anxious because yes, I'm going through withdrawals, but I'm also sleep deprived. And that's why I have this heightened sense of anxiety. I promise you it's going to pass, it's going to get better, but I want you to start to focus on good sleep hygiene, going to bed and waking up at the same time every day, not being on your phone before the evening time, maybe reading a book, meditating, whatever it is you have to do to get better sleep, exercising, which helps with sleep, avoiding caffeine, avoiding sugar before bed, focus on good sleep hygiene. And I have two or three videos on this channel that are dedicated to helping with the insomnia during THC withdrawal symptoms. Money and finances. The best thing you can do after you quit an addiction is just start to save your money. Start to squirrel that money away. Don't worry about investing. Don't worry about starting your own business right away. Save, save, save. And then learn about investing. Learn about building businesses. Learn about making your money work for you. But right now, you just have to rebuild. And you're going to feel better when you see money accumulate in your bank account. Being under financial stress is an absolutely crippling feeling. And for a lot of people, THC addiction puts them under financial stress. So I want you to take some time, fix up your finances, save, save, save. And if you're in debt, again, that's something here that we can help you try and get out of at Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching. So again, call us if you need help with these things. But pay attention to your, your financial hygiene. Lastly, focus on your goals, focus on your ambitions. When we give attention to anxiety, anxiety will breed more anxiety. When we give attention to our goals, when we give attention to our sobriety, when we give attention to our recovery process, we're only going to prosper, we're only going to go better, and we're gonna keep our brain from getting distracted by going and attaching to things that, de that develop more anxiety. Remember, addiction is a vicious cycle. Addiction loves feelings of anxiety and feelings of depression. It feeds on it. I'm anxious, I need to smoke, I'm depressed, I need to smoke to feel better. You're stuck in a cycle. Remember, it's the THC, it's the drug, it's the alcohol, it's the substance that's putting you in this position. And there's one thing that you can do to start fixing this right now, and that's taking your sobriety and your recovery process seriously. As I say in a lot of my videos, drop today's date, drop today's time, and let me know today is the day that you're gonna make a change. Today is the day you're gonna implement these tactics to help you with anxiety. Now, if you're struggling with insomnia, follow me into the next video where I give you some tips on how to manage it. And if you're struggling with anxiety and you find things that have helped you, share it in the comments for other people. We're building a great community here, guys, and I'm glad that you're a part of it. I'll see you in the next video.